Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports, joined today as always by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special interview episode for everybody. We're joined today by Naomi Girma, and we're going to get into a great back and forth with her. But a quick reminder to follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. You can also head on over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe to youtube.com slash Attacking Third. But welcome to the show, Naomi Girma, number one overall draft pick of the 2022 draft. Fresh out of Stanford University, going to be staying in Cali, joining one of the newest NWSL expansion clubs, San Diego Way Football Club. How are you doing today, Naomi? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to chat with you guys. Uh, we're excited to have you. As soon as you went number one, we were like, we got we got to get Naomi on the show. <laughs> we got to chat with her, talk to her, uh, welcome her. Congrats on being drafted number one overall. I guess let's start with that. Let's let's start with that, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We're a little bit removed from from the draft now. Some things have had some time to settle. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you still riding high on those emotions or have you settled into to the, the emotions of, of draft day a little bit since then? I mean, I think it's obviously still exciting. Um, I wasn't at home when I got drafted, so it was great to come back home and celebrate with my family and just take it all in with them. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's settled now with the holidays, but it's still obviously a great feeling. Naomi, a little insight here at Attacking Third. We love defenders and we love defense. And so we were <laughs> pumped to have you be num- be the number one overall draft because I was like, yes, Sandra, we get to chat with a defender. Like, this is fantastic. <laughs> I play defense. We just type on defense all the time because defense wins games. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, but, but let's talk about that. So you weren't home when you even got drafted. So take us back to last Saturday, draft day. Where were you watching the draft? Who, who were you with? I was I was in London and I was with three of my best friends so two of my teammates and my roommate and it was kind of funny the draft was at 7 p.m like our time so we had a whole day before like we went to a museum and I was like oh my gosh like I just want the draft to happen <laughs> and I was just waiting for everyone to wake up so we could finally start but we were just sitting like in our Airbnb and like made a setup behind us um it was pretty funny um and yeah it was just it was exciting to be with three of my closest friends and then I I got to like talk to my parents after and it was it was great I gotta ask a quick follow-up what which which museum were you at in London <laughs> trying, um, to kill, I, trying to kill time <laughs> we went to the Tate Museum earlier that week and then we went to uh the Robert I don't know I'm getting it wrong like Albert and Victoria Look, but bottom, was, bottom line is they couldn't contain those museums couldn't help you contain the excitement of the <laughs> end of your soldier. I'm just curious. I was like, which museum failed to contain <laughs> the excitement of the end of your soul draft? Uh, I mean, it was an exciting draft. It was an exciting week. There was mm-hmm. the expansion draft that took place ahead of that event. And then there was the actual NWSL draft, like right a day after that or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now with you being drafted, you're heading off to, to San Diego. You're going to be. Uh, playing under Casey Stoney with Jill Ellis as as the general manager, president of, of uh, San Diego Wave. And there's a ton of big names at the club already. So ahead of the draft, they made a ton of moves uh, uh, ahead of the expansion draft. They acquired a few players. They announced Abby Dahlkamper as their first player with San Diego. So they were already like, you could sort of see, like with Casey Stoney as a former player and defender, locking mm-hmm. up uh, and announcing Abby Dahlkamper as a first player. And then also announcing somebody like an Alex Morgan or, or Kaylin Sheridan and that there's already a ton of names that are were tied to this club before you actually went number one. And, and since there's been a little bit of time now since the draft, have you had a little bit of time to, to think about who and perhaps in particular you're looking most forward to, to working with? Um, yeah, I, I, I think obviously being a defender, having like someone someone like Abby Dahlkemper to play with is incredible. Um, like with her experience and how how good she is I think it's like great to come in as a younger player and have someone like that to look up to um, also like Tegan McGrady coming in I played with her at Stanford um, when I was a freshman she was a senior so it's kind of funny to go back into that same situation coming in as a rookie um, and then obviously just like the staff it's it's like yeah I think all of it I've, I'm really excited about especially the back line 
Are having that personal connection with Tegan McGrady, having played together in college at Stanford, have you guys texted? Mm -hmm. Have you chatted at all about like hangouts in San Diego? <laughs> we texted like right after the draft. She was like, let's go, Nay. <laughs> um, and then uh, after that, it's just been like holidays. So I'm sure we'll connect again once everything kind of dies down. Oh, yeah. You have a whole season together, perhaps yes. more. <laughs> so you have plenty of time to connect. But, um, but, Staying in state, so this is huge for you. You're you're from San Jose. You went mm -hmm. to Stanford, and now you're just traveling south to San Diego. So you're staying in state, which is huge, huge. So how special and important is that to be able to play professionally in your home state? It's the best. I, I mean, like for me, it's just it's great going to Stanford just to have my family at all of the games and make it easy for them to come watch me because I know they love to do it. Um, and I know if I was across the country, they'd find a way to be there, but it would just be a lot harder for them. So I think it's like best of both worlds for me. I get to play professionally. I love California. I'm staying in state and then my family can be there as much as they want. I love that. The, I'm, I'm big on seeing the, the local talent go to local clubs and I'm excited mm -hmm. to, to see you get a run out there with with San Diego, I, I mean, let's, I, I'd like to follow up on that a little bit uh, before I jump into this next question. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, we get a lot of casual listeners on, on this show, a lot of people who sort of get introduced for the first time who are finding a women's soccer podcast or an NWSL specific podcast uh, to sort of get their background and, and get their 101. So for maybe our listeners who aren't huge followers of the collegiate game, what uh, would you tell them about your own game personally? What is it about Girma's defensive game or playing higher up the pitch or not or preference? What is it that you bring to the pitch on game day? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think <laughs> I think I bring like a calming presence on on the field. Um, playing in the back defensively, um, I think I can use like my speed to like play balls from behind and then read balls that come like in front of the back line. And then I think a big part of my game is actually like on the attacking side. Um, and because the back line really starts the attack and being calm and making sure we can build out of the back and find players higher up the field to eventually go to goal. I um, I know that when you got drafted, there was there was a lot of discussion about like, oh, like she's a defender, she's a center back. But if for whatever reason, maybe if Casey Stoney is, 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 is feeling, uh, you know, a chance to mix things up that you could be pushed uh, higher. So I, I'm just gonna have to say to our listeners, now that they've heard you say what you can bring to the pitch, they're just gonna have to wait and see what Gary brings on game day. They could do it by watching NWSL on Paramount Plus. Uh, San Diego has been doing a lot of exciting things uh, one of the things along with announcing all these players and then selecting you number one overall is uh, doing the name reveal. There was a lot of excitement around what they were going to be referred to as mm -hmm. and the, the launch of their crest and their colors. And honestly, when we covered it a little bit here, it was pretty cool. A lot of different things going on there with the horizon, some hues of pink, some hues of, view, of blue. Uh, now that you're, you're back stateside, have you been able to rock any gear yet? Have you been able to get connected with any type of warm ups or or anything like that? I don't have any gear yet, but I am Jeez. looking forward to getting some. I think the crest is super cool. The people want the gear. How is I know. The gear? how if the players <laughs> can't get the gear, when are the when are the when are the people gonna get the gear? Jeez. To be fair, I got back like a few days before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him some time. We got it. We got to get you hooked up. Hopefully this will be the push, the public push. Yeah, yeah, you. totally. <laughs> Looking at the colors of the crest, do you foresee like a hot pink jersey kit? Well, that'd be cool. Right? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I hadn't thought about that, but I love oh. like sunsets, everything about it. So like the crest is just great. Yes, the crest really embodies San Diego and, and the club and what they're trying to push for in the community. Um, so besides soccer, uh, off the field a little bit, heading south, mm -hmm. maybe a little warmer, Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything off the pitch you're excited for in San Diego? Maybe uh, things to try or foods to eat or things to do? Yeah, definitely. I'm I have I have a lot of teammates from SoCal and we always argue about the beaches. So I will say I am excited for the warmer water. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm excited. I'm excited to try like all the different food places. Um, 
I know a lot of people from there who are like, oh, I'm going to give you all my favorite like local spots. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to be in a different place and just really get to experience the culture. That's all the excitement surrounding it. Now, I know sometimes there can be nerves, there can be intimidation. Is there anything about jumping into the professional game, uh, playing with some of these fantastic other athletes uh, alongside of you? Is there anything that's nervous about this experience? I mean, yeah, I think there's always nerves just leaving the environment you're used to and going into a new environment um, and then also taking it to the next level. Um, so yeah, I think I think I would definitely say I have some nerves, but I'm just really excited to like experience the next level and play with these amazing players. And yeah, I think it's just it's gonna be a really a really cool new challenge for me. Um, and I'm just excited to get started. Just to piggyback off that a little bit, uh, you know, the league is going to be into almost, you know, nearing a, a decade of existence right here mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. And it's it's been a league that players in the collegiate game can point to and refer to like, hey, that's a place where I want to play someday. So it's somebody who's just been drafted coming out of one of the top collegiate programs in the country. Uh, was there any particular team that you would ever try to pay attention to and say like, hey, like, I like their playing style or any type of players that you were uh, keeping an eye on to try to maybe emulate their game or take parts of, of the game and work it into yours? Yeah, I think um, just playing together, like, I watched a lot of players that left from Stanford, I think, just naturally. Um, Tierna Davidson is one. I love the way she plays out of the back and defends. Um, and then I would, I, I guess I would follow a lot of the games, um, but like I would follow the Thorns uh, to watch Sophia Smith um, and Spirit. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, I would try to watch it and um, like just watch the, the defenders and the midfielders and see how they moved and see how, how much faster the game was uh, going from college to the pros. I love that. Uh, and here, here at the show, uh, you know, I mentioned already that we get a lot of uh, listeners that come in that are look for NWSL news, look for United States Women's National Team news and sort of uh, get a little bit of, of the 101. So this is where we like to have a little bit of fun with our guests mm -hmm. uh, towards the, the, the later end of, of the episode. We'd like to help our listeners maybe get to know our interviewees with some quick hit type of questions, a little semi rapid fire, maybe a little bit. Uh, even though we ask these sort of rapid fire questions, there are moments where like Lisa and I might want to like ask of uh, an interviewee to like uh, elaborate on that a little yeah. bit. So, uh, we're going to have some fun with it. So very, very simple to kick things off. Let's play this or that with Naomi. Uh, First off the bat, you're going for chocolate or vanilla if it's in front of you? Vanilla. I actually don't like chocolate. Oh. I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh, People don't realize that there is the answer. There's a strong camp out there that's like, yeah. I'm actually not into chocolate. I don't and I respect like chocolate, it so yeah. much. <laughs> Own it. Just, Own it. it. We have just categorized you as someone that doesn't like chocolate. So That's good not, to know. I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. Um, okay. What about the beach or the mountains? Where would you rather be? The beach. Right good on. thing uh, you're going to San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to <laughs> Wave. <laughs> wave <laughs> FC. Uh, if you had a preference uh, to wind down, you're going to do it with a movie or, or maybe a book? Mm. I'd say movie. All right. You got a favorite movie? I just watched Spider Man oh. recently. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Good yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather have a home cooked meal or go out to a restaurant and enjoy? Um, I would say I'll say restaurant just because home cooked meal usually like the family doesn't really enjoy. They're like stressing to cook for everyone. So <laughs> Clearly, we're coming when off we have our gathering, the we're coming off the holidays. No, <laughs> yeah. I love that. So I love that so much. We're coming off the holidays, and I'm just thinking about like God. It's like we're like, like my family like gets together and like makes tamales. It's like there's always got to be a certain process, or yeah. there's a certain way, or like everybody sort of has their their method, and you're just yeah. sort of like I. I Look, I, let me just I feel that energy so much. <laughs> Sometimes it's just better to go out to a yeah. restaurant. Um, okay, we're going to keep it food related for a little bit. Uh, okay. This might be controversial, but pizza or tacos? Tacos. Right nice. On. Yeah. What about <laughs> iced coffee or hot coffee? Iced coffee. Year round, even in the winter. Uh, one of my one of the, at one place, my favorite order is ice, so I get it year round. But if I go somewhere else, I'll get 
I'll get it hot. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into some social questions a little bit. If you mm-hmm. get the opportunity to hang out with your friends, you talked a little bit about this already. Is uh, if, if you're hanging with your friends, do you have a preference of going out or staying in? Mm-hmm. Going out. Nice. <laughs> All right, so so let's go a little more soccer specific on some of these okay. now. So preference, left foot or right foot? Right foot. Nice. Okay, you get an opportunity to get in the highlight reel. Are you going for the header or are you going for the volley? And you know what's going in. The volley. Oh, I like that. I like that. Would you rather play on turf or grass? Grass. Hands down. Right? Hands That's down. always a little bit of a... I just, there are so many haters out there that are like, turf is better. I just want to prove to them grass There's, is better. Yeah. Well, guess yeah. what? They're weird. I'm like, Definitely well, guess grass. what? <laughs> uh, do you have a preference of a ga- uh, day game or a night game? Night game. Mm, nice. Okay, yeah. so 1v1 drills or, or in a game when you're practicing them, would you rather be on defense or have the ball attacking? I'd rather be on defense. Nice. Yeah. That's what we like to hear from the defenders. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, yes. <laughs> Spoken like a true defender. Love that. Okay, well, we have a little, uh, a last uh, question for you. And maybe it's not so much of a this or that, but it is something that we bring up uh, to any of our uh, guests who happen to be pro athletes. When it comes to prepping for a game or, you know, participating in trainings, there's always a routine. There's always maybe a pregame meal. Is there like a go to like pre or post game or pre or post game training type of snack or meal that you've got to go to or that you've got to have as part of your routine? Um. I would say, like, it kind of depends what environment I'm in. So, like, at school, I kind of had, like, a go- we'd go to one place for, we go to Jimmy V's for a pregame meal, and I'd always order, like, the same, um, like, sandwich thing. Um, so, yeah, I think now going into San Diego, like, I'm I'm going to make a new routine. I know it can't be the same as before, but I'm kind of excited for that. All right. Ooh, making like- a new routine. Is there anything that you, like – like, is there a certain kind of sandwich you like to have or, like, something you definitely don't want to have? What are your ideas for your new routine? Anything on the horizon? Um, definitely, like, like I really like some type of turkey sandwich. Um, like, yeah. some, like, full meal, but usually I'll have, like, the same meal for every game. So I just need to figure out what I want that meal to be. <laughs> right. Well, that just means... <laughs> <laughs> that just means that we're gonna have to follow up with you when the yeah, season yeah, actually ask me, gets. Ask me in two months. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're gonna have to follow up with you when the season gets kicked mm-hmm. off. When yeah. you've got some games under your belt as a professional. Uh, but yeah. until then, I want to thank you for joining us on Attacking Third. This has been a delight. Uh, I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us as always. Naomi, again, once again, thank you for being here. Quick reminder for everyone: you can follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast shows. You can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with a question, and we'll answer it during our mailbag segment. And we're also available as videos. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash attacking third. We'll be back on Wednesday with some uh, U.S. Women's National Team Year wrap-up. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Naomi Girma, this was Attacking Third.